And then Saturday, lo fuimos. 20, 25 hours? 25 hours? Yeah. I just want this to come out in the middle of the street and uh, just share some things that's been top of mind for me. Hope, hopefully some of this is useful, maybe some of it isn't. Um, so right now as co-CEO of Loop, um, I've been very, very focused on recruiting people and managing teams and nurturing talent. And I think one of the things that I recently um, had posted about was uh, trusting your team up front. That has to be the way you do it. It was really unnatural for me to, uh, to do this. I come from a, yo, don't trust anyone, watch your back kind of culture. But you quickly start seeing that the way to, to grow an organization, you need love and you need trust. Of course you need execution and all the competence, but love and trust is the oil that allows the machinery to work. It's what allows your talent to, to feel at home, to want to step up, to take big risks. So um, I did just want to double click on that. Um, I'm learning this as a leader. You have to lead with all of your trust up front. Now, people say, yo, John, what happens if they burn you? If they burn you, then you take action. But don't let the fact that you've been burned impede you from trusting again in the future because trusting is the way to let your talent step up, be the best that they can be, and it makes your organization, your business, the best that it can be. Let's just talk execution on marketing. Um, one thing I've noticed in building Loop is that a lot of my competition, they will run ads and keywords on like the literal thing that they're selling, insurance. If you're selling sweaters, you might do sweaters, you know, you might do, uh, uh, cars, but in reality, no one really gives a shit about what you're selling. They care about what they do with what you're selling, right? So the best way to sell is not to sell, it's to brand, which means that I want you guys to get in the habit of telling stories and talking about what your customers do with what you sell, okay? So if you sell boots, don't make content about boots, make content about hiking, make content about, you know, uh, cowboy life or whatever type of boot it is. The point is, uh, the way to build brand is not about what you sell, it's about why you sell it and why your customers buy what you sell. You know, the, the world obviously is just completely different in 2021. Um, and I think when, okay, I can't see. I'm on mobile, so um, I couldn't see. Okay, um, Mendy, you vlogging this? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, why not? Uh, I'm like, Yo, this is why like I can't wait for Mendy to be in, in Austin, Texas because like all these meetings need to be fucking vlogged, bro. We're building a billion dollar business. I guess just before we start, I think the purpose of the meeting really is just to walk away with this feeling like um, we have a clear idea on exactly what creative concepts to execute. And then, you know, ideally we kind of like leave AK with like specific variations of copy and creative and then he can just kind of get to work on cranking them but all right jc then we this is where nick and i kind of synced up and, and 
identified some of the top ones. Um, so what we did was basically, I thought the best way to kind of go about it was identify a headline and then create the graphic or the piece of creative around that, or at least a concept for what it was. Uh, because I think that would be the easiest way rather than just saying, oh, we're going to throw this randomly, this randomly, this randomly, and reverse engineer it from what we want to pop. Um, so some of the ideas that we had was kind of like the first part and I'll run through each of the, the headlines and I'm just going to throw them out there to see if any of them stick out more to you and I'll give you the concept of why I thought about them. Um, so three things that you're getting dinged on that you didn't know about. So the concept on all of these because they're headlines is then to elaborate in the actual written text copy where it's just a kind of that scroll stopper. The idea for us to take into consideration that if we did have the firepower or the resources to be able to make them. Um, yeah, we could definitely make these. Popular. This is like a low effort super super potentially high impact type of thing. Yeah, because of the fact, and I think that our communities respond very well the moment they see content that's geared towards them because of the fact that it's not so heavily prevalent and it just really pops out once it actually shows up. All of a sudden it's like, oh, something for me? Okay, cool, mm -hmm. boom, click. Mm -hmm. um, so just concepts there. So we have all of those against, and then there were other ones in here um, as ideas that we might be able to go through, but I figured we start with five to six just to not kind of overload just yet and then get variations against those kind of headlines and stick there. Beautiful. Um, so then... Um, can you go to your browser and control T a new tab and then just type in uh, pre dash launch? Let me see if it pulls up on just a bit that second page. So these were kind of the six category. Now, look, so this is what I want your thoughts on. Right. So like there's a slight difference between like creative that's optimized for paid performance and then organic performance. So um, I guess. I wanted your thoughts on, is there any overlap here between organic and paid content creation? So these are the six verticals that we're gonna create content around. So caring for people, why you save, so we'll talk about all the reasons why. Heartfelt character, I came up dry, I came up dry on, so I'm not sure. Um, irreverent wit, so poking fun at the existing industry, something we'll do. Standing for mobility, so like, yo, loop moves you, right? Like, we power your hustle, we power your drive, we power your, we're, you know, we're on the road together. And then like some social enterprise moments as well. So I'm gonna work with AK to build content in these verticals. And I think that, you know, now that we have the offer on the table and we just got the signed offer from Taylor, so she'll be joining us in two weeks. We have two weeks to build out this arsenal of content for her to post organically. Um, and I just wanted your early sense for if, you know, I guess like in me in my mind, what I would like to do is honestly just amplify our organic strategy because I don't, I don't always just want to sell. Although I do want to run creative that is optimized for conversion. Like that shit that you have is like some killer shit. It's like, like you've just like dissected the psychographic and you're just like, yo, this is, this is what's going to fine. And then I also want to make sure that we are providing value and instilling awareness and positioning. And so that's what I think this will be good for. But I just, I wanted your thoughts there. I think that's, that's exactly it. What we should do then again, just cause my head always just reverses against the budget is once we identify like, okay, we want 10 to 15% of the budget to go towards just quote unquote, the awareness value based content, because that's top of funnel. Um, and then a lot of these, again, it, it, the biggest thing for me on paid is just making sure that whatever piece of creative we're using is a scroll stopper within those first three seconds. And then I think that the biggest after that, the next step is understanding who we're actually utilizing it for. Um, so if it is very specific to like the Spanish market or the college market, university market, et cetera, we know that that's going to be conversion based regardless. And we can still go value because it's going to be such high relevance um, for what it is. But then the third, after we actually get them to stop, we drive home within more detail on the copy. So the creative itself, if we're just talking graphics or pictures, just has to be small one-liners that pop. I agree, there are a lot of situations where stills end up crushing, like without a doubt. Uh, but then 
video can too and video just allows for more of the retargeting capabilities i think that we had as far as audiences but but at the same time i don't want to let that stop us because we kind of we like what's more important than the look and feel is like the the calls to action the copy the so i think what we do is probably develop a light pass in each of the buckets ak i'll work closely with you on them yeah and i, I see the process more like it's kind of like creating code cards you know like you give me a kind of the topic and i just go from there and hey, see what's up that's right i forgot your jh media alum you know it's just it's a it's a bsu <laughs> man yeah it's companies that are on the cutting edge just to see what their ads are like because they just hire the best creative teams ever and we got so inspired to create really per, like high performing ads so I'd love to revisit that here because like we're sitting on a creative mind and I think it's going to really be explored. I think that's a good process. And I think I would like to build up to having to like removing that additional layer of like John Henry approves. I think like, cause that's just going to bottleneck it. So I think that we do the first several passes all together, just like we're doing right now. And then like once like, I'm not the arbiter of truth, the market is. So like once the market starts deciding that like what everything is working, I'm out of the way and like then the creative team can just like execute against that. So um, I think I... Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, please, please, please. I was like, isn't it more like an ABCD testing? I don't know how much budget we have, but like once we have four or five quid and we're like, okay, these are good. These are like broad enough. We can just shoot them and then see whatever is good and then kill them after a few days and then come up with new ones. Hundred percent. And that's what JC is good at. It's just like getting to the core of like what works and like the the cost per lead will tell us pretty quickly. Uh, if we're at like at ten, like all right, to, you know, if we're at one, then that's good. So okay, I don't think we need to spend too much more time synced up. I mean, I think this was good to help me understand what you guys were thinking. And I think that what we'll do is like, let me take a pass at getting up in there and developing content in those verticals that I touched and I'll sync them up against the stuff that you did, JC. And then we'll, we'll kind of come up with our top five ideas for each of the categories, send them to AK and then AK, you start taking a pass and feel free to like visually switch it up. I think that'll be important. Like I want to test pink backdrop. I want to test white backdrop with a pink border. I want to test the blue with the pink highlight. Um, I want to test like stock images without our brand color. Um, I just like want to test a bunch of different, you know, I want to test like strong, just like how we do, wow, JH Media is just like the perfect blueprint. Just like how we have like, we use like champion Gothic or like a punchy font. Like that's going to be important to just like communicate a strong offer, pow, punchy. You know, I'm going to want some with no text on it and then just like the copy in the in the caption. So we'll test a bunch of different iterations. So let me put this work on me to get to sync up the organic and the paid and then I'll kick it off to AK and then AK from there. We just crank out some BSUs. Let's go. We've been waiting for this. I know. we. Yeah, it's like it's time. So um, and I'm just I'm just so excited. Man. But until then, I think that we just do it like this and it doesn't really involve me. If you guys need me, then please let me know. No, hundred percent. Um, and I think as we expand the different types of creative that we're going to loop in, then that liaison role becomes more important because then you can feed it to JH exactly. media. But since AK is going to handle the bulk of it, that's fine. And then once Pearl Fisher has the brand guidelines and I don't even need to weigh in on anything design wise, you know, we can just kind of go from there. I think we should have five to 10 of the creative assets, but then on my end, it also becomes independent variables to text against the audiences. So just because one creative might not work against one specific audience, it still might be a winning creative against a different audience. So now my testing becomes that ABC, but then DEF, GH, and then that can go also with headlines or call to action buttons, um, things of that nature so as we go through it then all of a sudden now we identify the combinations but depending on the budget that we have in that moment uh, and how many creatives we have i'll also then split it against the different audiences on top of that and the different headlines and the different copy becomes its own creative in and of itself so if we guard the budget and just like hold it just to hold its sake and wait for a full two years to get the learnings like that's not venture pace 
What we need to do is accelerate the learnings right now before we're in market so that like the, the sooner we learn what we need to learn and the more leads we acquire at a fraction of the price, like the more we'll hit the ground running when we go live, which means we can raise more money, which means we can then really step on it. There's no cap on, no cap. There's no budget on uh, learning what makes our customer tick and how we fit into their story. Imagine when we're on the office together and we're like having these creative sessions and like JC, like we're going to crank content for you on paid and Nick for marketing and AK on design. Like it's just going to be too ill, man. Word, 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 word. No, I appreciate that it's received. And just so you guys know, it's like, I'm familiar with the pace so I can pace set. Um, but then it's like, it can't be done alone, right? So it's like us all busting ass together like we have been that allows us to like fill in that pace. So good shit, guys. I won't hold this any longer. I don't think it's necessary. Um, awesome. Thanks, guys. Good shit, guys. Peace. Talk to you guys later. Wow, I'm glad we got that. That's good. Yo, that just goes to show you we gotta be documenting because like the best shit comes when you're just actually working. <laughs> like trying to just like come up with little things to say here and there. It's kitschy, it's cute, you might get some good clips, but like you're not gonna get the meat. You gotta get the meat. You know? <laughs> you gotta get the meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. <laughs> potatoes. Um, yo, let's go, let's get out of here. Yo, that was a lit clip. I need that. I need that footage. I need that footage today. Today. Yeah, yeah let's get out of here. Yeah.